APC lacks capacity to win elections, says Senator Magnus Abe. And free and transparent polls, a panacea for peace, stability in West Africa, says President Buhari to ECOWAS leaders. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacom. Senator Magnus Ngay Abe on Monday said the River State chapter of the All Progressive Congress, APC, lacked the capacity to win the 2023 general elections in the state. Abe, however, said Governor Wike would not solely determine who would succeed him in 2023's general elections, but majority of the people in the state. Abe, who was believed to have joined the Social Democratic Party, SDP, to actualize his gubernatorial ambition, also expressed the hope that to be Wike's successor in 2023. And joining us to discuss this is Golden Chama. He was the factional chairman of the All Progressive Congress in River State until uh, recently, which uh, when he resigned. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chama, for joining us. Mr. Chama, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clear. Ah, perfect. Okay, great. Let's start by looking at the problems of the All Progressive Congress. I think we have had several conversations over the year, uh, the years, uh, you know, concerning the APC in River State. And here we are again today talking about uh, the APC yet again. Um, I'll start by asking why you left the APC. I left the APC for a lot of reasons. But the, the most important reason is that the reward system in the party is very abysmal. People work and they are not rewarded. Those who have the capacity to leak goods are given the, are given the best options and the best offices in the party. What do you mean by uh, what do you mean by those who who uh, lick boots and uh, are giving the best um, offices in the party? What does that mean? Yes, it's surprising to you that a party like APC that has very able and competent persons, when it comes to appointment, those who get it. Uh, for me, I consider them as being inconsequential as to what is given. So most times, the best materials are not being used to enhance the party's fortunes. Interestingly, um, you and I have been here talking about factions within the APC, and those factions have held sway for... I mean, almost two years plus, if I'm not mistaken, maybe four, it's spanned into four years. And you're here saying that um, um, what some of the problems in the party was, you know, lack of fairness, um, in, you know, in distribution of offices. Uh, but is that really the sole reason why you left the party? Because you were not given an office? Or is it that you were sad that certain things were not done right? Because to the ordinary eye, it seemed more like you were looking, seeking for an office and that wasn't given to you and that's why you left the party. Is that it? No, I said party members are not being rewarded for their hard work. It's not a personal thing. I aspired to be the chairman of the All Progressive Congress. But it's baffling that the party, or next to the faction that was on the other side, we took all the office. And if we leave that and go to the others, most of the offices in the party are not being given to the best materials. Rather, only those who have the capacity to tell stories, 
league goods are given. If you remember, some time ago, the governor of the state had cause to lampoon the nomination of the minister from the state. That it was appalling to the state that that was the best the APC could give for the ministerial position. Though it is his own opinion, but a lot of other appointments that have gone on before now are laughable. So for me, politics has to do with interest. Let's talk and about... I found that the, let's talk my interest was no longer protected. Okay. Let's move on to other matters before we talk about, you know, what the senator um, said about the APC. Now, I remember some time ago when I brought the... Um, other side of the APC to the show, uh, they did, of course, many times accuse your faction of, you know, being in bed with the opposition, that is the PDP, for the longest time. Um, and I, I, I remember even the senator himself was, you know, um, points fingered as someone who was in bed with the governor. And this is reference to uh, a Thanksgiving service that he had in the state that the governor of the state had attended, which raised eyebrows. Um, at any point in the life of your APC membership, was there uh, a wooing from the opposition for you and members of your faction? To the best of my ability, to the best of my knowledge, I'm aware that we're all politicians. Those who were in the, SDP, were in the PDP before we came over to the APC. So all those in the PDP, we know them. They also know us. If anybody wants to woo anybody, it goes on a daily basis. But what I want to explain to your viewers is that we belong to APC as at the time we were there, and we made sure we protected the interests of the APC. We had no business with those in PDP. As I speak to you now, I left for the SDP, I'm also aware that uh, Senator Magnus left for the APC, uh, for the SDP. We, we, we didn't go to the PDP. It is a clear vindication that we were not in bed with those of the PDP. But let me refresh your memory a little bit. Those with Amechi and Faction are those going to the PDP. If you remember, some time ago, a lot of those who reside after me headed to the PDP. And they're all from Amici's faction. I left the APC, I went to the SDP. But they are all going to the PDP. What does it tell you? I'm not a member of the PDP, I do not have any relationship with them. Okay. But those, my accusers, I do is going there. Okay, Let, let's move on to the future of the APC. Now, I know that you speak now for the SDP, but you obviously were members of the APC. Now, the senator had been, um, um, had been quoted to say that um, the APC will not and does not have the capacity to win elections in the state. Um, why do you think that? And I also want to ask... Um, do you think that the Magnus Abe faction of the All Progressive Congress at the time um, has had enough power to cripple the party? Because what the, the, the senator is saying is that without you know, him and other members of the faction, obviously the party does not have a long lifespan. But how true is that? Yeah, I, I would prefer you ask me directly. I'd to ask him what he said. Well, I'm asking I do you. Not have what do you think yeah, the chances are for the APC in the yeah, state right now? And yeah, how powerful you, do you think your right. faction is yeah. or was? Yeah. The truth of the matter is that the All Progressive Congress is a great party. But unfortunately, in River State, it has been managed poorly. And the, the, um, the success story of the party is below half. So there is no way they can win any election in River State, especially out of the governor. It's not possible. 
Hmm. I'm curious. Um, I remember also while there was this drag and back and forth, which cost the party all of its ticket in 2019, they blamed your faction and the senator for their inability to win elections or even run for those offices. So again, now that it seems that you all are out of the way, what are the chances? I mean, what makes you think that they might not be able to win the elections in 2023? I mean. Yeah, to be fair to you, in 2019, if the party was on the ballot, the party would have won the elections. But unfortunately, the poor management of the party spotted the party's chances. We had a problem where we all agreed that the party do not have elected officers in the various levels of government, in the world, in the local government, and in the state, that it will be best we do direct primaries. But unfortunately, those at the corridor of power there said that it will be better to deny the party of these chances and the way for indirect. And those who had bought forms contesting the, the election to the various offices went to court. And the judge in his wisdom and the court in his wisdom nullified all of it. So it lost the opportunity. Okay. Now in 2022, people bought forms again. For the delegate elections, they were denied. The same pattern. So I don't know what is left of the party, but I will hear in very recent times that even a BOT member of the party from my state has also left the party for the PDP. It's unfortunate. Let's come to that the let's to show you. Okay, let's come to the SDP That's now. Right. Let's come to the SDP now, knowing that you and the senator and most members of your faction are now in the SDP. Um, I, I wish that I was, you know, the senator was here. I don't know if you can speak for him. But um, the SDP is not necessarily a party that one would say is a major political party in, in River State being that the, the tussle has been between the All Progressive Congress and the People's Democratic Party. And now the SDP being introduced into the mix here by the Senator. What is the spread and the structure of the SDP in the state, even though members from your party have, has moved to it? I'm aware that the SDP as a party is registered with INEC. They, all have, they also have structures in all wards in our local governments, and in the states. So it is a viable option. But with the entrance of Senator Magnus Abbey into the party and his followers, their chances are brighter. I want to look at the issue of um, the upland, I mean, the power sharing formula. Let's look at the trajectory. Uh, we had a governor, Odili. We also had a governor uh, who wrote to me, We now have a governor, Wiki. And there has been this conversation about, you know, the, um, the guys in the Ogoni section of the state. And of course, the guys who are in uh, the waterlocked areas who are supposed to be given an opportunity at this ticket. Now we see that the APC is fronting uh, Atoya Cole, who seems to be from um, one of the places who've been p p canvassing for an opportunity at the ticket. But then, of course, um, we have now um, the senator who is from the Ogoni extraction of River State. Um, does this mean that, that, say, the APC and, of course, the... SDP stands a chance of wooing Rivers people to their side, especially for the SDP, uh, being that Senator Magnus Abbey has been canvassing over and over uh, for the Agonis to be given a shot at that uh, ticket. Again, 
What's the guarantee that with a Senator Magnus Abbe on that ticket, that the Rivers people would flock in his direction? Um, let me explain to you. Before River State was um, divided between Rivers and Bayasa State, in the old River State, we had the river ride on the upland. Mm -hmm. 80% of the river ride was taken away from River State to form Bayasa. So the, the equivalent issue saying that upland and river ride share it in Fire Passage doesn't hold. But even if the argument is supposed to hold, the state is structured into senatorial zones. Rivers east, rivers west, and rivers southeast. Rivers west and rivers east have held the position of governor. But rivers southeast have not had it. Hmm. Coincidentally, all the senatorial zones have riverine elements. Now, the only senatorial zone that do not have, that have never tested the governorship, is the rivers southeast. In the river southeast, we have the Okopos. They were deputy governor for eight years. In the river southeast, we have the Andalus. They were deputy governors for another eight years. But the entire Ogoni area have never had deputy governor or governor. And this is the senatorial zone in 2014 that the party APC, in its wisdom, zoned the governorship to. But this has been that's, this has been a subject of argument. Problem? I'm sorry to cut in there. This has been a subject of argument between the senator and the minister. There have been allegations that the former governor had promised that power was going to be zoned, um, you know, to that part of the state, which he didn't keep to his promise. Uh, and then there are also, uh, you know, uh, disagreements on that issue, saying that there was no such thing, there was no such agreement, uh, you know, in the first instance. And one would think that maybe this was at the core of the, you know, the, the imbroglio between the minister and the senator. In 2014, it was glaring, it was clear to everybody that the governorship was zoned to the river southeast. And the two candidates that, the, you know, three of the candidates were the former deputy governor, Senator Kuru, Senator Magnus Abbe, and Dakuku Pitasai. The three of them in APC thought for the governorship ticket. No other person from any other senatorial zone did vie. So it was glaring. And do you and think I'm aware okay. that mm -hmm. that is the we only the time the APC zoned their governorship to the southeast and everybody held to it. But just with the intention to frustrate, deny the, the most competent candidate in the APC as at the time, it was that change to river That's all. Okay. Because we're, almost, that, because we're almost running out of the time. The same senatorial zone has a river and components. Okay. I think you made that point clear early, earlier on. Quickly, before we wrap up, this is my last question. It ha the yeah. senator, Senator Magnus Abbey, has been quoted to say that he will support the APC national um, candidate, presidential candidate, uh, for the 2023 elections. But then you all are in the Social Democratic Party. Uh, what does that mean? Because, of course, the SDP does have its own presidential candidate. 
Does that not um, is that not tantamount to anti um, party uh, party practices? Um, no, no, I, I disagree with you. Every individual has the right to vote for any candidate he wishes, irrespective of party affiliation. If Senator Marcus has said that he still supports the candidature of Alaji Bola Tinubu Ahmed, whom he worked for while in the APC, that is his personal opinion. He's at liberty to hold that. Okay. Well, because we, we're out of time, I want to say thank you. Golden Choma yes. is the faction or was the factional chairman of the All Progressive Congress in River State until he recently resigned and moved to the SDP in River State. We want to thank you, Mr. Choma, for being part of the conversation and we wish you the best of luck in your new party. Thank, thank you. you thank you so much. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break now. When we return, we will be joined by some gentlemen as we discuss the conducting of free, fair and transparent elections in Nigeria. As President Buhari has told his fellow leaders in West Africa that these are what we need for our democratic process to grow in the sub-region. Stay with us. <laughs>